let's talk about rotational motion formulas and how they compare to the linear motion formulas. I have a mass of four kilograms and I'm going to apply a 10 Newton force to it. What will be the acceleration? Of course, we'll use Newton's second law, F equals MA. Plug in the numbers, and we get 2.5 meters per second squared. Remember, we always want to use our units. Now imagine I have this mass on a massless rod of 0.75 meters. What's going to happen? I think you can imagine it's going to rotate. It's going to travel a distance S along this arc length. Could you use your linear motion formulas to figure out that distance in a time of 0.6 seconds? We'll assume the initial velocity is zero. If not specified, then just assume it's zero. Do you remember a formula for the distance traveled if you're accelerating? Doesn't that look familiar? The initial velocity was zero. Plug in your data. The arc length is 0.45 meters. It would be the same thing if it just went straight, but because it's mounted to a pivot, it's going to curve. Can we figure out the angle that it rotated through? Could you find the average velocity from here to here? You can just say it's the distance over the time. We get 0.75 meters per second. How could you get the final velocity? We could just use this. And we'll have 1.5 meters per second. Or we could use our definition of acceleration. Plug in the numbers, and you'll still get 1.5 meters per second. Well, this is what we're familiar with, the linear motion formulas. Could we now apply our rotational motion formulas to study the same situation? We'll keep all these answers over here. Now, instead of looking for an acceleration that's linear, let's find alpha, which is the angular acceleration. Well, just like we used F equals MA, that's Newton's second law of motion, in linear terms, we'll use Newton's second law of motion in rotational terms to find alpha. The torque is a force times the distance that's perpendicular measured from the pivot. That's 10 Newtons times 0.75 meters. That's 7.5 Newton meters. Now, this is the linear inertia, the mass. But in rotational problems, we have to deal with something called rotational inertia. It's not just the mass. It's how far it is from the pivot. The further out it is, the further it has to go, the harder it is to move. Previously, we derived the inertia as mr squared when all the mass is the full distance from the pivot. That's four kilograms times 0.75 meters squared, and we get 2.25 kilograms meters squared times alpha. Now we can solve for alpha. We get 3.33 repeating radians per second squared. This tells me that we're accelerating. If you accelerate it linearly, the force causes the acceleration. If you accelerate it in an angular sense, the torque causes the acceleration. Let's see how far it rotated. Just like we said distance equals one half AT squared, we can use the corresponding rotational formula to say theta equals one half alpha T squared. Plugging in the numbers, we get 0 0.60 radians. Just like saying V average is a distance over a time, we can say omega average is a theta per time. 0.6 radians in 0.6 seconds, and we have one radian per second. Well, just like we said, acceleration is V final minus V initial over T. So we could solve for V final. We could use the same corresponding rotational formula. The initial angular velocity is zero. The time it took was 0.6 seconds. And we were accelerating at this rate. Well, that gives us a final angular velocity of two radians per second. Hey, that makes sense. The uh, average is one. So if you double it, you get two because the initial was zero. Let's see if it all works. Theta times R equals S. Omega times R equals V. And alpha times R equals A. Well, why don't you just check all this work over and see if this really works? Go take the theta. Go take an omega. Go take an alpha. Multiply by R and see if you get these variables that we have over here. It all worked. 